Okay, Assalamu alaikum. This is the female reproductive system discussion for the pre med 211 students. Now, these are learning objectives. The student will be able to uh, list the components of the female genital system and accessory glands, describe the structure of the ovary along with its coverings, supporting ligaments, and blood supply. Then, the student will be able to describe the fallopian tube with its parts. And the uterus with reference to its location, position, parts, wall, supports, and the blood supply. And lastly, the will be uh, students will be able to discuss the structure of the cell. Okay, this is a slide for the female rep reproductive organs. The reproductive tract in women is contained within the pelvic cavity and perineum. Now, pelvic cavity is what? The cavity bounded by the two hip bones, right and left hip bones, and posteriorly by the sacrum. So sacrum in the middle on the posterior side and the two lateral hip bones, right and left hip bones and the right and left hip bones, they join and meet at the pubic bone uh, together to form the joint pubic symphysis. So you can see here in the, in the picture that there is a cut section of the anterior joint, the pubic symphysis where the two pubic bones of the pelvis, they are uniting together and there is a Sagittal section. So posteriorly, you can see these are the uh, vertebrae for the sacrum, right? So sacral five vertebra they are jointed together. So these are the sacral vertebra. So posteriorly and this anteriorly, this is the cavity sacrum laterally by the two hip bones. And what is perineum? Perineum is the structure, is the region that is below the urogenital diaphragm. So from pubic symphysis to the coccyx, we have got um, ligamental partition, a muscular area uh, composed of muscles that is called the urogenital diaphragm. So below that diaphragm, this area, very small one. In the female, this is a very small area with the openings only, but in the males, the perineum contains the external genitalia. So in which region the external genitalia are present or located, it is present in the perineal area. So in the males, penis and the scrotum they are the contents of the perineum or perineal region. Then we have got the gonads. Gonads like ovaries. Ovaries produces ova, the uh, ovum, single female gamete, and the sex hormones like estrogen, progesterone, reproductive ducts, fallopian tube, it transmits and nourishes the sperm and ovum, and the site of fertilization. So this fallopian tube. Uh, this is small fallopian tube. This is a fallopian tube where the ovum from this ovary it comes it is taken up by the finger like projection uh, of the last part of the fallopian tube. It goes inside this tube, fallopian tube, and inside the fallopian tube, since this tube is connected with the uterus and uterus with the vagina, so what is sperm is coming through the vagina, passes through the uterus, and passes into the tube, fallopian tube, and they come here in the infundibular region where they fertilize together. Then the third, another structure is the uterus. This is for the reception, retention, and nourishment of fertilized ovum, fetal development. Now, reception means the fertilized ovum, the zygote, it travels through the fallopian tube coming back and it comes into the uterine cavity where it is embedded in the wall of the uterus so the uterus is for retention and nourishment of the fertilized uh, <coughs> ovum the zygote and the whole of the fetal development occurs in the uterus then comes the vagina organ of copulation means this is the area where the uh, semen is delivered now this is the female reproductive system again and it will, this slide will talk about the accessory means supporting glands. So in the females, there is a greater vestibular glands. And this greater vestibular gland is homologous. Homologous means almost similar. Means uh, the counterpart uh, in the males. So homologous to bulbo-urethral glands in males. So just like the uh, bulbo-urethral gland that was embedded within the urogenital diaphragm muscle so this gland uh, becomes in the female greater vestibular gland so you can say that these are the uh, counterpart to each other external genitalia in the fem uh, female pudendum 
now this slide relates with the ovaries and it discuss about the functions so what is the function of ovary is to produce the ova and number two it produces hormones like estrogen and progesterone uh, during childhood ovaries are small and the surface are smooth but after puberty the surface become more scarred uh, due to ovulation means every month uh, this ovary uh, it ovulates and at that point of rupture of the outer surface a scar is developed so a female in the fertile period uh, uh, between 13 to 45 years so every month this rupture of the outer surface occur and there is scar develops right in healing so uh, after puberty you can see the observe the ovary of a fertile woman in medical legal cases uh, that the surface is scarred if it is smooth it mean the infertile period is not started uh, she is younger than 13 or something right before ovulation and at menopause ovaries shrink and atrophy gradually due to lack of hormone and the surface is more scarred so after 45 years every month developing scar 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 so after 45 years or 50 years or 55 years when the menopause occur the ovary of that female first of all it will be atrophied it will be shrink and smaller in size and there will be multiple scar there in this slide we have got the ovaries so ovaries are located on the lateral wall of the pelvis if you see this uh, uh, superior view of the pelvis you can find central structure first of all where is anterior and what is posterior can you say this vertebra at the back right so this may be the lumbar vertebra or sacral vertebra and this is the pubic symphysis and the, the anti lateral anterolateral abdominal wall muscles so this is a center point in the center in alignment in the female you will find three organs so first organ will be the urinary bladder second organ will be the uterus and the third organ will be the rectum in the males in the center again only urinary bladder anterior and rectum posterior will you will find and there will be no uterus now the location and discussion of the uh, uh, ovary is that it is located on the lateral wall ovaries now this is the uterus in the center and find the ovaries the, the ovaries with this arrow and this small structure egg like this one and this egg like structure where my pointer is totally covering this <coughs> size of the ovary so this yellow color <coughs> egg shaped structure this is the ovary and they are on the lateral side so this is the lateral wall of the pelvis this is the anterior wall of the pelvis posterior wall of the pelvis so ovaries are located on the lateral wall of the pelvis in the ovarian fossa ovarian fossa means depression so there must be some depression here for the placement of the ovary so that is called ovarian fossa they lie in the angle between external and internal iliac vessels so can you say this <coughs> this abdominal aorta this abdominal aorta at the posterior one in the center of the abdomen it divides into right and left common iliac this is the right side this is the left side so right common iliac and left common iliac right common iliac then somehow while crossing the pelvic brim it divides into external uh, iliac and internal iliac so right external iliac and, and right internal iliac so where this uh, bifurcation is taking place at the place of the brim uh, this is the location for the uh, ovaries where they are located so this ovary is located this is the external iliac and internal is not visible because it has gone inside the pelvic area this external iliac will go out externally out of the pelvis and after crossing the inguinal ligament of the lower limb it will become the femoral artery now each ovary is connected to the posterior aspect of the broad ligament by the meso-ovarium 
to its anterior border. Now, this is the picture picture showing a broad ligament. Broad ligament is nothing except a peritoneal covering that is covering. So, sometimes uh, uh, it becomes double layered. So, just like you have studied the mesentery and mesocolon, uh, mesosigmoid. So, uh, so here, there again, mesentery, they are covering the structures. So, this is a double layer of peritoneum covering first the uterine tube and this covering goes out and cover the ovary and then come back. So, this is a double layer of peritoneum but this is named according to the structure that they are containing or encapsulating. En so, here it is said ovary, ovary is this structure, ovary is connected to the posterior aspect of the broad ligament. Now, there is the broad ligament here. Here, you can see the ovary is here. And can you see this hanging broad ligament here? Something sheet-like structure. So, this is the broad ligament. Just like here in this picture, you can see that there is a uterus. And there is the ovary. And there is a fallopian tube. And this yellow color sheet, there is a double layer of peritoneum, right? And this double layer of peritoneum, this hole is called as the broad ligament. And this broad ligament has got different uh, double layers that encloses the ovary and the fallopia and the uh, ovarian ligament and sometimes this uh, fallopian tube. So here this fallopian tube is very superior. So you can see this superior fallopian tube here and that is all covered by this uh, yellow color peritoneal covering. So this is one. Now we are discussing the ovary. So ovary is is posterior to the round ligament. Ovary is posterior to the round ligament. This is the anterior aspect, round ligament sheet. This sheet, this hanging sheet from the fallopian tube, this is anterior to the ovary. So it is saying it is connected to the posterior aspect of the broad ligament. So broad ligament, this is the anterior aspect of the broad ligament, this is the posterior aspect of the broad ligament. So this is the anterior layer of the mesentery or peritoneum and the posterior layer of the peritoneum and when this posterior layer is there it then encloses the ovary right from the posterior side and then come back again on the posterior side so ovary it is on the posterior aspect of the broad ligament and this double layer of mesentery of peritoneum so from here and then here now it covers the ovary and come back here again so this two layer this two layer that is actually enclosing the ovary this double layer of peritoneum is called ovarian uh, is it is called meso ovarium right there is a hilum of the ovary hilum means the area from where arteries vein ducts can enter and get out of the ovary so this is the hilum of the ovary so at the hilum uh, this ovary is connected to the posterior aspect of the broad ligament by means of this double layer of peritoneum called as meso ovary. Meso means mesentery, double layer. What is mesentery? Mesentery is a double layer of peritoneum. So, double of layer of peritoneum, meso. So, this double layer is actually enclosing which structure? Ovary. So, this structure is called meso ovarium, right? So, whenever the meso ovarium come in later slides, you must know that there is a double layer of peritoneum uh, that is attaching the ovary, covering the whole of the ovary and then attaching to the posterior aspect of the broad ligament, right? So, these are the different parts of the broad ligament. So, one of the part of the broad ligament is meso ovarium. So, brought by the meso ovarium to its anterior border. Now, this ovary has got borders and surfaces. There is the superior surface sometimes in this picture, right? So, just concentrate here. Uh, these are the borders. Here, the hilum and this is the border, right? This surface, this surface. So, these are where the two surfaces join. They form the border. So, this is the anterior border. Why anterior border? Because this is the anterior side is here, right? So, anterior border, posterior border. Ovary is attached to which of its border? or with the broad ligament, anterior border, right? 
where lies the hilum of the ovary anterior border the surface of the ovaries is covered by germinal epithelium now the surface uh, below this peritoneum covering right uh, the epithelium uh, the outermost covering of the ovary it is uh, surrounded by the germinal epithelium sometimes this germinal epithelium is the same name of this mesentery or peritoneum the peritoneum that covers uh, this ovary the same peritoneum uh, is pre was previously called as the germinal epithelium right so uh, so here the labeling is saying the outermost covering whatever the outermost covering this is the germinal epithelium and you should also know this outermost covering is actually the peritoneum which is covered by the germinal epithelium a layer of the cuboidal epithelium so what uh, layer is there this is the cuboidal epithelial layer so germinal epithelium is cuboidal simple cuboidal epithelium underneath the germinal epithelium the ovary is surrounded by a dense connective tissue capsule called as tunica albuginea tunica albuginea is the same layer in which the male testes the outermost covering fibrous capsule that was the tunica albuginea so same ovary the outer boundary the outer wall of the ovary it is actually uh, composed of dense connective tissue capsule right called as tunica albuginea so tunica albuginea in males tunica albuginea was covered by the again peritoneum visceral uh, part of the tunica vaginalis so here again the outer part the tunica albuginea this is the condensed fibrous capsule the wall of the the boundary of the ovary or the testis and in the ovaries again the outer wall that is the peritoneum so this peritoneal outer covering it is also called as germinal epithelium and it's it is simple cuboidal epithelium but usually uh, the peritoneum is simple squamous epithelium serous membrane right but here is the old term and they say that is the cuboidal epithelium and this is the uh, outer covering now this is the ovaries again <coughs> regarding the shape of the ovaries it is ovoid in shape measures about uh, how long it is uh, 3 cm long a breadth 2 cm height is 1 cm two surfaces medial and lateral surface so what we are looking here this is the medial side and the lateral surface is on the lateral facing the lateral side the pelvic wall then there are two borders posterior border we have discussed the posterior border uh, is free border and anterior border that contain the hilum it is connected with the double layer of peritoneum the meso ovarium and anteriorly that meso ovarium is attached with the posterior aspect of the broad ligament two poles upper pole lower pole means superior pole uh, to which the uh, tubal extremity close to the fimbria of the ovider so this upper pole is actually very very close not attached surface to surface but it is very small space is there and uh, this fimbria of the fallopian tube is at the upper or superior pole while the lower pole or inferior pole of the ovary is attached with this ligament this ligament attaches this ovary with the uterus and this ligament is called ligament of the ovary or ovarian ligament okay this is the slide again for the ovary discussion so one is the structure of the ovary so in the structures which is the internal cut section structures so when any organ you cut down transversely you can find two regions one is the central region the other one is the peripheral region the central region is usually called as the medulla or medullary region and the peripheral part that is called as the cortical region so here you can find very easily there is the anterior border and there is the posterior border of the ovary and anterior border there is the attachment 
with the meso ovarium and through the meso ovarium arteries vein nerves lymphatics they are connected with the ovary and you can see these arteries veins they are occupying which area it is the central area right it is, they are not going to the peripheral area so the central area is usually occupied by the connective tissue loose connective tissue blood vessels nerves arteries lymphatics and the cortical area the peripheral area this is all occupied by the developing follicles so cortex contain ovarian follicles right in different stages of development and the central portion contains the connective tissue containing blood vessels now supporting ligaments of the ovary means uh, the ligaments that are holding or fixing the ovary in its place so ovaries are not attached to the fallopian tube but are suspended nearby uh, through several ligaments so one of the ligament is the ovarian ligament ovarian ligament is actually connected just below the fallopian tube opening right so the tube that is opening into the uterus just below that one there is another ligament called as the uh, ovarian ligament because this ligament when we talk about the ligaments and mesentery all these things so they are somehow the part of the uh, peritoneum right so this is again uh, a layer of the peritoneal covering right so that is become thick ligaments in anatomy uh, to any structure any membranous structure become thick so that thick area that thick region is called as the ligament right so ovarian ligament is a thick covering and it connects the ovary to the uterus just below the uterine tube entrance right so this ovary always remember the ovary is connected is fixed with the uterus by means of ovarian ligament right and the purpose of these ligaments is to carry the blood vessels right second supporting structure is suspensory ligament this again a ligament a thick connective tissue or membrane that contains the ovarian vessels again where is the suspensory ligament now you can uh, memorize these two ligaments in a way that one is attached to the medial side of the ovary the other one is attached to the lateral side of the ovary the medial side since it is towards the uterus so here the ligament is ovarian ligament and the lateral side since it will it is facing to the pelvic lateral pelvic wall so this lateral side uh, is uh, attached with suspensory ligament of ovary again a thick a layer of peritoneum right that carries the ovarian artery so this ovarian artery is coming through the suspensory ligament of ovary now meso ovarium this is a third uh, structure that supports the ovary to fix in its position the anterior border of the ovary is attached to the posterior layer of the broad ligament by the meso ovarium we have discussed this figure that this is the ovary and this is the uh, broad ligament this is the fallopian tube and this broad ligament is anterior to the fallopian to the ovary right so this is the anterior surface here anterior layer of the broad ligament and this is the posterior layer of the broad ligament so these are both are peritoneal coverings right so peritoneum anterior layer and this is the posterior posterior one goes back and attaches with the hilum attaches with the anterior border of the ovary and then it covers the ovary and that covering is also called as germinal epithelium it is cuboidal uh, simple cuboidal epithelium and then we come back and make a double layer of peritoneum this double layer of peritoneum just like the other mesentery it is called meso ovarium right and this circle is showing the hilum of the ovary through which the arteries and veins they are coming and going out then in this slide we have got the blood supply to the ovaries where is the ovary this is the ovary and in the ovary you can see there are so many surrounding arteries are there so previously we have discussed one very popular ligament suspensory ligament that is attached to the lateral side of to the ovary right there is a fallopian tube fimbriae right so there is the su suspensory ligament that is attaching to the lateral end of the ovary and the medial end or medial border of the 
uh, ovary is attached with the ovarian ligament right this lateral side that is attached with the suspensory ligament this is carrying a very popular artery called as ovarian artery and ovarian artery is coming from the abdominal aorta so previously in so many uh, topics we have discussed gonadal artery that is arising anteriorly uh, uh, as a paired one right and left uh, ovarian arteries for two ovarian arteries so this is the ovarian artery which is a branch of the abdominal aorta and running through the suspensory ligament and supply the ovary so ovarian artery a branch of the abdominal aorta enters through the suspensory ligament and runs medially in the meso ovarium and supplies the ovary so uh, this ovarian artery it is present in the suspensory ligament plus the meso ovarium right the, o, the double layer of uh, peritoneum that is uh, attaching at the hilum of the ovary anastomosis with uterine artery the uterine artery is a branch of internal iliac artery now where is internal iliac artery this abdominal aorta it divides into right and left common iliac artery first then this right common iliac on one side it divides into two branches external and internal internal goes inside the pelvis to supply the pelvic organ and the external goes outside the pelvis and crossing the inguinal ligament and become the femoral artery in the lower limb now this internal iliac artery which is a branch of common iliac this internal iliac artery gives a branch called uterine artery so from here the uterine artery you can see this uterine artery so this is the uterine artery that runs along uh, and enters in the broad ligament part of the broad ligament meso matrium and then it supply the uterus so uterus is this portion right but this artery uterine artery it divides into two branches ascending and descending the ascending branch ascends upward and and it also supplies the proximal part of the fallopian tube right so the proximal part of the fallopian tube is supplied by the fallopian branch of the uterine artery right while the distal part of the fallopian tube is supplied by the ovarian artery right now coming to the ovaries so ovaries they are supplied by the ovarian artery that is mainly coming from the abdominal aorta but there is an anastomosis between this ovarian artery branches and the branches that is coming from the uterine uh, for the uterine artery right so uterine artery divides into uh, ascending and descending ascending ascends up passes through the uterine and passes through the broad ligament uh, this ovarian ligament and enters the ovary so here the ovary so all these branches they are the branches of the uterine artery so in the fallopian tube there is an anastomosis and the ovary is an anastomosis between the arterial branches now veins the ovarian vein drain into the inferior vena cava on the right side and left renal vein on the left side just like in the males we have got the testes uh, the right testes the testicular artery uh, veins they drain into the directly into the inferior vena cava but on the left side on the male also uh, the pampiniform plexus after pampiniform plexus form the testicular vein it drains into the left renal vein similarly in the female the left ovary form the venous plexus and they form the ovarian vein that drain into the left the renal vein then this is the slide showing the fallopian tube also called as uterine tube or oviduct oviduct the duct that carries the ovum uterine tube is a tubal expansion of the uterus right or the fallopian tube location lies in the upper border of the broad ligament between its two layers now fallopian tube to show here where is the fallopian tube this one right so fallopian tube is above the ovary and fallopian tube and this broad ligament they are anterior means this fallopian tube is superior and the broad ligament is anterior now make a cut section at this level and come here 
so this view this is the posterior superior posterior you are looking from the posterior side superior posterior this is something wrong here so don't take it as like this so just a view here that is the posterior superior view of the uterus and this broad ligament is anterior and this ovary is posterior right now here the same situation broad ligament is anterior and ovary is posterior right and the broad ligament it's a double layer of peritoneum and peritoneum is just like a bed sheet any sheet that covers your your structures so it's a complete single sheet it comes here as an anterior layer peritoneum and it the sheet and circle around the uterine tube right and then that sheet goes down and become the posterior layer of this peritoneum double layer of peritoneum the the <coughs> mesentery and then this again the same procedure it encloses the ovary and then come back and become the posterior part now this is called the meso ovarium so it it lies fallopian tube now we are discussing about the fallopian tube where it is located it is located above the ovary right and it is also the superior layer uh, to which the double layer of peritoneum is covering so that's why it is called like the upper border of broad ligament so this is the broad ligament and this broad ligament it is the superior and this is the inferior end so the superior end where it is located in the broad ligament at the superior uh, side of the broad ligament it is about 10 cm long how long is this tube fallopian tube 10 cm function of the tube transport the ovum from the ovary to the uterus connect the peritoneal cavity with the uterine cavity now this is important clinically uh, uterine cavity is inside the uterus right so that cavity through this tube the cavity is continuous within this tube and this tube opens here so this is an open tube open open end so this open end is actually very close to the ovary right here you can see the distance but at the time of ovulation this distance is removed and this fimbria in the last part of the fallopian tube it actually comes very close covering the surface of the ovary so that you can see this bulging these bulging are the developing follicle inside the ovary so anyone that ovulate it should come into the tube so this distance is removed at the time of ovulation so they are very close so it connects now back so that uterine cavity through this fallopian tube is connected usually before ovulation with the abdominal cavity because this is the continuous open tube so anything from the peritoneum can go inside the tube or anything sometimes in ectopic pregnancy the zygote instead of going into this direction it may get out and give peritoneal birth means peritoneal pregnancy so that is a life threatening risk then provide site for fertilization and nutrition for the sperm and the fertilized ovum so this fallopian tube you know at the one of the part of the fallopian tube is called ampulla where the fertilization takes place so this tube also provide the site for fertilization then this again fallopian tube i uh, it is talking about <coughs> they are divided into different parts of the fallopian tube now look at the fallopian tube this is the uterine cavity inside the uterus and this cavity has got a tube like opening here this tube is opening is a part of the fallopian tube and this part that is inside the wall of the thick wall the muscular wall of the uh, uterine wall that part is called as intramural part or intramural segment of the fallopian tube intra means inside mural means sometimes a layer right so inside uh, the part that is inside the muscular layer or inside the wall of the so for common understanding intra mural means inside the wall of any structure so you may find this word in other just like in the uterus or ure, ureter while passing uh, through the wall of the Uh, urinary bladder so that part is also called intramural part of the ureter 
so intramural means within the wall so this is the first part so uterine part or intramural part means towards the uterus or the within the wall muscular and opens into the uterine cavity then after this intramural outside the uterus this part a very narrow part this is the narrowest in the diameter is the narrowest one this is called the isthmus isthmus is any structure that is acting like a bridge so this isthmus is a bridge between the fertilization site of fertilization and the uterus so this is a very narrow bridge called isthmus then ampulla widest part of the tube and this is the site of fertilization so it has got four parts intramural isthmus ampulla and infundibulum so out of these four sites which site is reserved for the fertilization so uh, fertilization takes place in the ampulla of the fallopian tube why because this is the widest part so widest part of the fallopian tube is the ampulla infundibulum funnel shape the last part is funnel shape right it's a conical triangle you can say one end is broad the broad part is this with the margins is finger like projections the margin of this uh, funnel right and this taper down to open into the continuous as the ampullary part form of fimbria which is spread over the ovary so these finger like projection of the infundibulum so infundibulum its upper margin is not a continuous structure it is a finger like projection called fimbria opens into the peritoneal cavity through the abdominal ostium so this uterine cavity is continuous through the fallopian tube uh, into the abdominal cavity then fallopian tube again and fallopian tube obstruction now since fallopian tube is a site for fertilization so sometimes uh, due to a recurrent fallopian tube inflammation infection uh, recurrent infection uh, the the isthmus the narrowest part of the fallopian tube it become inflamed and when it is inflamed it closes the lumen so if at that moment the fertilization take place anywhere so at ampulla the fertilization take place but here when it passes to the isthmus or some the narrowest part that is closed so that zygote is stuck over there and it is start to develop the placenta in the wall of the fallopian tube and later on in 2 months it becomes an acute emergency because the fetus size increases and the tube burst and the bleeding occurs so that is the intrauterine or intraperitoneal bleeding that is a very risky factor so it's a very very high emergency so, so narrowing may cause infertility so this is the one of the example of ectopic pregnancy is called the tubal pregnancy right the pregnancy is in the tube fallopian tube but why it is happening because the inflammation occur of the fallopian tube so whenever there is inflammation the sperm from here also cannot go and pass up to the ampulla so ampulla is the site of fertilization but this isthmus due to inflammation is swelled it closes the lumen so no sperm can go so this is another reason that why recurrent genital infections can lead to infertility in the females inflammation of the fallopian tube is called salpingitis salpings means tube itis means inflammation so this inflammation of the fallopian tube is called salpingitis in greek or latin it is the most common site of ectopic pregnancy right ecto ecto means outside its original place so ectopic pregnancy pregnancy outside its original place original place is here inside the uterine cavity within the wall now ligation and cutting of the uterine tube is a method of permanent birth control now just like in the males you did vasectomy so what you were doing you were cutting the ductus deferens and the two ends the cut ends of the two uh, ductus deferens you tie it up same you do here this tube is just like a vessel right so cut the 
tube at the isthmus part particularly because this is the narrowest one, easiest one and then tie them. So what will happen? Nothing can go inside the uterus or from the uterus nothing can go into the fallopian tube. So this is the one of the permanent birth control method. It is usually performed at the isthmus part of the uterine tube. So where you cut isthmus part, blood supply of the fallopian tube, uterine and ovarian arteries and the veins, right? So this ligation, since you are ligating the tube, so it is called tubal ligation, right? So fallopian tubes are tied off and cut apart. So you are cutting apart and then tying apart. Now this is the slide coming to the second part after the fallopian tube, the uterus. Uterus, can you see this very good picture with colored one? So these are the ends of the fallopian tube cut down, right? Fundus, body, cervix, three colored. Any part of the uterus that is above the fallopian tube opening. So here is the opening, here is the opening. So this part is called the fundus of the uterus. So just like here, this is the uterine cavity. So this is the opening of the fallopian tube, right? So above this opening, this part of fundus, below this opening, up to the kinking means there is a there is a slight compression here. So this part is called the body of the uterus. Then from this kinking, this uh, this kinking is called as the isthmus part, and this is part is called the cervix, right? This cervix, okay, fundus is rounded part above the entrance of the uterine tube, body, main part of the uterus. So this is the main part of the uterus, the largest part, inferior to the fundus and superior to the isthmus. Superior to the isthmus, isthmus is this, isthmus is an opening. And if you see the real uh, uterus, this is a triangular uterine cavity, right? So one compression is here, the other compression is here. It means from this region that is the cervix, this cervix has got two compressed openings. One is superior, upper, the second one is inferior, right? The upper one is interior, so it is called internal os. Os means opening. And the lower one that is opening into the vagina is outer side, so it is called external os. But external os and internal os, these are the two ends, end points of the region cervix. Right, so although cervix is continuous with the uterus, right, but this is a different part. This is the cervix, right, because it has glands and secretes something, right. It's a kind of big, big signs. Isthmus narrowest part between the cervix and the body correspond to the internal os. This level, where they will find the internal os, this, this level, this is the junction between the body and the cervix. Inside, you can say that this is the internal os. From outside, you say it, this is the region of isthmus. So isthmus, as I told you, is a break, is a connection between the two parts. So body and cervix. From outside, there is a slight depression, slight uh, mark called as the isthmus. But from inside, you can see that inside there is an opening. So this is the internal opening of the cervix. So it's called internal loss and external loss. Cervix between internal and external losses. So what is the part of the cervix? You can say that this is the part between the isthmus from outside or internal loss from inside and external loss from inside and externally where the vagina is attaching with the cervix. Cavity of the uterus is triangular in coronal section. So coronal section, this is a, you have made the coronal section, so it is triangular in nature, in shape. Now this is the slide showing the uterus again and uterus location and its position. Uterus is a pear shape, muscular organ with its uh, uh, 3 inches long, 2 inches breadth. Uh, length into height into breadth or something breadth and this is the anteroposterior one inches location and position where it is located it lies in the pelvis cavity between the urinary bladder and the rectum so first of all in the pelvis 
there are two parts of the pelvis. One part is above the pelvic brim and the other part is below the pelvic brim of the pelvis. The lower part that is below the pelvic brim is called true pelvis and within the true pelvis you will find the pelvic true organs. So there are three true organs from anterior to posterior they are urinary bladder then in the female uterus and the rectum. If it is male then only urinary bladder anterior and posterior rectum. But So here since we are discussing the uterus so uterus is sandwiched between anteriorly by the urinary bladder and the urethra and posteriorly the rectum. Rectum will here the posterior side. In the erect position when the bladder is empty the uterus lies in an almost horizontal plane. Erect position means here it is a bend position, bending. It is flexion is here. Flexion means bending. So it is bent at two points, right? So first point is this, the second point is this. It is bent at two points. So if it is not bent, if you make a straight one, so all its structure will come in a horizontal plane, right? The transverse plane across the body. Now come to these two bendings. These two bendings can come to the first bending. Bending creates an angle, right? And this angle is called, there are two angles here. One angle is angle of anteversion. Anteversion means version, means bending, just like flexion. So anterior bending is anteversion. It is slightly burned. And another is anteflexion. So this is flexion and version, it's almost the same, right? So flexion. Uh, now come to these two limbs. For this angle, the one limb is running, is a line that is running through the central axis of the vagina. Which part is this? This is the vagina. So central axis of vagina, it is going like this. This is the central axis of the vagina, right? Then the central axis of the cervix, not the body or the fundus. Cervix is this initial part that is opening into the vagina. So this cervix, the central axis that is running through the cervix is this red line, right? So it will go all like this. This is the central axis of the cervix. Cervix is only this part. So this red line and this blue line make an angle and this angle is bent. So this bending is called anteversion. And how much it is bent? 90 degrees, right? So uterus, cervix with the vagina. So this, this is the angle bending between the cervix and the vagina. Now between the cervix and the body. So this green line, this green line is actually showing the axis of the body of the uterus, right? So this is the line that is running through the central axis of the cervix, right? Only this part and above this part, there's a body, there's a fundus. So this body, so this green line is running along the axis of the body of the uterus. So body of the uterus and the cervix. This is a bending again. So this bending is anterior flexion. So always remember anteversion and anteflexion. So anteflexion is always within the uterus, right? So within the uterus, it is anteflexion. So between the cervix and the body. So the normal position of the uterus is anteverted, anteverted from anteversion, forward bending, forward bending, axis of the cervix canal, uh, this space is also called as cervical canal, right, the area that, so ends are called internal os, external os, and between the internal and external os, the cavity is called as a canal, within the cervix, so it is called cervical canal. So uterus at 90 degree with that of the vagina, right? So cervical canal with the vaginal canal, we have got an angle called anterior bending, forward bending. Then anteflex, axis of the body of the uterus is bent forward with that of the cervix. 
so cervical canal and the uterine canal uterine cavity you can say so between these two there is another bending called anteflexion in some women the uterus is bent backward on the vagina the uterus is then said to be retroverted now this is the normal bending so there are two normal bending anteversion and anteflexion anteflexion is always within the uterus between the cervix and the body of the uterus now sometimes this bending is not anterior is not forward but it is backward right so this whole position is changed so that whole position when it is folding backward bending backward is called retro means backward verted backward bending so this is an abnormal uterus again one of the type of infertility in the female then we have got the uterus again now come to the relations of the uterus the relation means the relation to the surrounding structures so just like with our friends friends are surrounding us so so what are the relationship between how is the relationship so which friend is very close one which one is far which one is intermediate so here in the organs we say this is the cut section of the pelvis showing this is the anterior side anterior abdomen and this is the vertebra you can see that this is the uh, sacral vertebra or lumbar vertebra sorry this is the lumbar vertebra because here the abdomen abdominal aorta is not uh, divide divided it is dividing below this vertebra so the division usually takes place at l4 for the arteries l5 for the veins so this is the lumbar so lumbar 4 or lumbar 3 is there so okay now this is the abdominal aorta there is the inferior vena cava and the abdominal aorta divides into common iliac right and left and then common iliac divides into external iliac and internal and between that two angle is the site for the ovarian fossa where the ovary are located now this is the female pelvis so anteriorly in the midline you can see this is the urinary bladder and posteriorly there is the rectum right the descending colon after sigmoid colon rectum so this is the rectum there is the uterus and there is the urinary bladder so what is the relationship of this urinary uh, uterus with the uh, urinary bladder that the anteriorly the anterior relation of the uterus is with urinary bladder and what is the post with which structure it is related posteriorly to rectum right so rectum is located posterior so the relationship of the uterus is posteriorly with the rectum anteriorly with the urinary bladder and laterally by the broad ligament so after this go lateral side you can see this broad ligament with a fallopian tube covering ovarian cavity so here and here these are the ligaments immediate otherwise there is a whole lateral pelvis is there then uterine wall is made up of perimetrium myometrium endometrium now just like any muscle of the limb the outermost covering is peri mycium then uh endomycium perimycium epimycium perimycium and endomycium so there are facial coverings so here the coverings so peri means surrounding the matrium matrium is the body so the anything that is covering the body the outermost covering that is the serosal layer this is the visceral peritoneum so here this is the picture now this is the uterus in the uterus the outermost covering right particularly the fundus is covered up by the peritoneum right so this is uh, the so outermost covering and here again the peritoneum goes down and cover the uh, body of the uterus the outermost covering is the perimetrium peri surrounding matrium body so surrounding the body is the visceral peritoneum right myometrium muscle of the body muscle of the body means middle layer so perimetrium is the outer mode the arrow is ending here and here right and here myometrium is a very thick muscular layer all this region from here from 
perimetrium to endometrium. Endometrium is tooth like, uneven surface, right? So, this is the endometrium. So, between the endometrium and the perimetrium, muscular layer, this all is the myometrium. Increases in size during pregnancy due to muscular hypertrophy. The size of this uterus as the pregnancy goes on month to month, uh, the size of the fetus also increases and the muscle wall of the uterus also increases just to keep the fetus healthy enough and to occupy uh, the size of the fetus. So this myometrium also increases in size. And this fundus also. So, whole of the uterus, the size that was 3 inches long, so it becomes almost fully occupying the abdomen. So, this fundus is coming to the zephoid process of the sternum at the ninth month, uh, particularly the sixth month, six, seven months. Then it lower down in the ninth of it. Okay, endometrium, glandular layer, mucosa, the glandular secretory layer the innermost layer, the epithelia, the mucosal layer, this is the endometrium. Endo means inside the body. So inside the body, there is the layer called inside the body endometrium. Glandular layer, that is mucosa, uh, mucosa just like in the uh, digestive system, it undergoes changes every month as part of the menstrual cycle. So in the menstrual cycle, out of these three layers, which layer is regularly shed off? endometrium right but in the endometrium again there are three layers the superficial is the compact layer then spongy layer and then basal layer the basal innermost layer it keeps alive it does not shed but the upper two layers the compact layer and the spongy layer of the endometrium is every month shed down and replaced with a new one implantation of the blastocyst future embryo occurs in this layer so this is the endometrium, myometrium, perimetrium. Which of the layer actually uh, gives implantation? Endometrium. Now come to the study of the broad ligament. As we have discussed and named the broad ligament is anterior to the ovary. The first point is that broad ligament is anterior to the ovary. So where is the ovary? Ovary is this, right? So anterior to this, this all is the broad ligament and there are different parts of the broad ligament the broad ligament is a double layer of peritoneum right so when double layer of peritoneum encloses any structure the name of that double layer is changed so just like in the ovary if this double layer of peritoneum this peritoneum posterior layer it covers the ovary right and since ovary is medially connected with the ovarian ligament inside so this sheath of peritoneum it not only covers the ovary but also covers the ovarian ligament and along the ovarian ligament and the ovary uh, this double sheet double layer they unite together for the passage of arteries and veins so this double layer of peritoneum the mesentery this is called the meso ovarium right so from ovary to the broad ligament this double layer is called meso ovarium sometimes they localize these structure separately just to mention the site of where the tumor is if anybody say the tumor is in the meso ovarium or tumor of the carcinoma of the meso ovarium so they are, will come over here they will not go here and there anywhere else so this is the that's why the broad ligament is divided into different parts so one part is the meso ovarium second part the same sheet when it goes up above this ovarian ligament this ligament, this is what? This is the tube, the uterine tube, the fallopian tube, right? So the same sheath, when it goes up, ascends up and encloses the uterine tube, right? And coming back, again, they form a double layer of peritoneum. So this becomes the mesentery. So this meso, uh, mesentery, is called mesosalpings. Salpings, I told you, just like salpingitis, means inflammation of the tube. So mesosalpings means the double layer of mesentery surrounding the tube. So which tube? Uterine tube, fallopian tube, OV duct, all are the name of this tube. Right? Then the same sheet is goes down and come up again 
to enclose another ligament that is a round ligament that is above the uterine tube and this ligament is used to support the uh, uterus to hook the uterus to bend the uterus anteriorly so we will discuss this later so after covering this round ligament it goes back the sheath goes back again downward so when this goes downward it the the this part uh, because this double layer now it is going moving medially to cover the uterus right and the uterus particularly the body of the uterus so it is called mesometrium so this is a mesentery uh, of the body epimetrium endometrium metrium means body the uterus the body of the uterus so this is a mesometrium so metrium the body of the uterus means the whole body of the whole uterus right so mesometrium when you go on the medial side you will find the big double layer that covers the whole of the uterus broad ligament is a sheet like fold of peritoneum that runs from the lateral pelvic wall to the uterus so on the medial side they are going to cover the uterus but what on the lateral side here on the medial side this double layer is covering the uterus right anterior posteriorly anterior and posterior both but as they move laterally where they go they go and run on the lateral wall become the parietal peritoneum right upper and lower it encloses the uterine tube in its superior margin uterine tube is this so this area this all broad ligament with meso ovarium meso salpings and meso metrium meso metrium is supposed to be like this right uh, or like this so here it is written that broad ligament superiorly yes it also contain the uterine tube also superiorly broad ligament is also there right so both of them they are on the superior side and suspend the ovary from its posterior aspect so this is the posterior view posterior side and this is the anterior side right so this is the posterior layer of peritoneum right covering the ovary from the posterior side broad ligament has got three part mesometrium this is the mesometrium oh sorry mesometrium this broad one then it divide into meso ovarium and meso salpings right this one does not have a separate name yet then we have got supports of the uterus uterus is an organ so how it is fixed in its uh, mid position between the urinary bladder and the rectum by means of ligaments so it is supported by pelvic diaphragm diaphragm pelvic diaphragm just like uh, the diaphragm that divides the thorax and the abdomen there is another diaphragm that divides the abdomen with the pelvis that's called that is formed by the muscle called levator and i right so that levator and i is called as the pelvic diaphragm then below the pelvic diaphragm levator and i are very transverse because this pelvic diaphragm is oblique it is not vertical it is not transverse it is oblique from right side and left side so that two oblique muscle that form the pelvic diaphragm and below this oblique uh, muscle the pelvic diaphragm there is a transverse uh, diaphragm that's called the urogenital diaphragm so there are two diaphragms in the pelvic region so uterus surrounding organs vagina and bladder okay vagina and bladder they also support them anteriorly and posteriorly right now there are several ligaments broad ligament we have discussed in the previous slide in this slide we will discuss the round ligament a round ligament uh, can you see uh, we have discussed in the previous uh, slide that above the uterine tube there is a round ligament and the purpose of the round ligament is to pull is to pull the uterus and bend it forward so this uh, anti flexion is done by the pulling of this round ligament so round ligament is attached to the upper lateral corners right and left corners of the uterus and it's a ligament and this ligament is homologous to the gubernaculum in the males and what was the role of gubernaculum in the males 
that gubernaculum was the ligament that its lower end was attached to the floor of the scrotum skin of the scrotum and in the fetal life and its next upper end was attached with the testis that was lying at the lumbar region so from there it pulls it shrinks right and pull the testis to descend downward into the scrotum helping in the descent descent of the testis same is here this uh, but that uh, that gubernaculum was passing through the inguinal ligament and uh, then passing through the uh, spermatic cord and then coming to the scrotum so here the round ligament is very long this is the abdominal cavity then from the abdominal cavity it has to get out of the abdominal wall so in the abdominal wall we have got a canal with two opening deep inguinal ring and superficial inguinal ring so between these two rings there is a canal so through the canal through the deep inguinal ring it enter into the canal that is inside the abdominal wall the three muscles and get out of the three abdominal muscle wall outside to the superficial inguinal ring and then it descends down below the pubic symphysis right and it is attached to the labia majora in the female uh, the pudendum uh, the first slide i think the pudendum is called as the the any external external genitalia and any external appearance of the female uh, genital organ that we are looking from the outside that is called as the pudendum so in the pudendum we will see the major labia majora and labia minora so major and minor uh, 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 structures are there so labia majora so it is attached with the labia majora because that labia majora uh, in the fetal life if it is a male that labia majora gives birth to the scrotum right in the next slide we have support of the uterus in the uterus support of the uterus how uterus is fixed in its position in the midline while one of the ligament called pubo cervical ligament pubo means pubis of the hip bone hip bone is called pubis ischium ilium and here smaller one is pubis so one ligament is attached to the pubis and the second part of that ligament is attached to the cervix cervix of the uterus so in this figure which bone is this this is the which bone is this vertebral area so this, this is the posterior area and this bone is what this is the pelvis pelvis is comprising laterally by the hip bone and posteriorly by the sacrum this is the sacral bone this is the ala of the sacrum and this ala of the sacrum then arcuate line on the ilium then pectinate line in the pubic tubercle this is the pelvic brim right so this circle this make on right and left side ala of the sacrum promontory ala of the sacrum and there is the arcuate line on the ilium ilium and then we have got pubic crest and pubic tubercle so this is the circle this is of pelvic brim where the common iliac artery also divides into external and internal iliac and here in the uterus uh, in the urinary system the ureter also kink so this is the second middle part where the constriction in the ureter is also takes place now where is the ligament this pubo cervical ligament you can see this pubo cervical pubis is anterior and this when the two pubic bone they join together they form the joint called as pubic symphysis so this is the cartilage is a cartilage in a joint so where is pubic where is the ligament this ligament what structure is this this is the body of the uterus and below the body we have got the cervix here right so cervix and there is the pubis and anterior to the uterus which which the location of this structure this is the urinary bladder right so surrounding the urinary bladder the ligaments they bypass and they go and fix with the cervix cervical part of the uterus so that ligament is called pubo cervical ligament so it is not cervical the neck actually this cervix is supposed to be the neck of the uterus right so in that sense in latin word cervix is there so cervix don't put it with the neck uh, your, below your head then we have got 
another ligament called as transverse cervical uh, ligament it is also called as cardinal ligament right so transverse means like this right so this ligament is called transverse cervical or cardinal or with the name of the scientist uh, mckendrott's ligament right so all are same uh, there is slight difference but uh, don't take it there so they are all same called as transverse ligament transverse cervical so cervix is there and this is transverse right provide lateral support to the uterus then we have got another ligament called uh, uterosacral sacral posterior right so one ligament is supporting from the anterior pubo cervical there are two paired ligament on the transverse so it is transverse cervical or cardinal that is attached with the obturator around the pubic bone ischial pubic ramus right and posteriorly this ligament is uterosacral ligament so uterosacral is not cervicosacral so these two cervical they are attached with the cervix of the uh, uh, uterus but this one is uterosacral means uterus so above slightly above these two uh, there is the upper one so it is called uterus and sacrum so this is the attachment of this ligament so this support the uterus from the posterior side which ligament support from anterior pubo cervical lateral transverse posterior uterosacral then we have discussed the round ligament round ligament is also visible here you can see this round ligament is above the uterine tube so there is the cut part of the uterine tube right and below the uterine tube the third attachment the third attachment that you are using here three structure below the uterine tube the ovarian ligament that that attached with the uh, ovary now this is the round ligament above the uterine tube it is attached to the upper lateral corners of the uterine body and then it goes to the in deep inguinal ring inguinal canal superficial inguinal ring and then get out of the abdominal cavity it runs now inside the in males is called region the females labia majora now this is the cervix so we have discussed the fundus above the openings of the fallopian tube then the body between the openings and the internal os so this region is the cervix and is the internal os external os so uh, it's inferior part of the uterus that projects into the vagina so this is the cervix that is connecting with the vagina internal os the junction of the cervical canal with the uterine canal so internal os is between uterine canal uterine cavity and the cervical canal the canal the space between within the cervix is called cervical canal the cavity of the cervix between the internal and external os external os the opening of the cervical canal into the vagina now there is the blood supply to the uh uterus and cervix so the uterus is this part and cervix is very long this part right now for the uterus the popular artery is called uterine artery and we have discussed the uterine artery was coming from the internal iliac artery right so internal iliac artery gives off the uterine artery it comes here and divides into ascending and descending branches the ascending branch of the uterine artery also travels into the uterine into the ovarian ligament also and into the uh, uterine tube right so artery supplies the uterus cervix and vagina so the descending part the descending part will go where it goes to the vaginal part right so it go, it supply the body it supply the cervix it also supply the upper proximal part of the vagina ovarian artery branch of the aorta right the gonadal artery both ovarian and uterine arteries anastomose collateral blood supply ovarian artery can you see here ovarian artery arises from aorta at the level of l4 
L4, the gonadal artery. So from the anterior surface of the abdominal aorta arises the ovarian artery at the level of number 4 and this ovarian artery then gives branches to the ovary right, and to the distal part of the fallopian tube. right? This ovarian artery also anastomos with the fundus and upper part of the uterus. So there, these arteries, these ovarian arteries and the uterine artery, can you see here this uterine artery, its ascending branch is going and traveling to the ovarian and the uterine tube and in the uterine tube here in the middle the ovarian branches and the uterine branches they anastomose in the fallopian tube they also anastomose in the ovary right the ovarian artery and the uterine artery so ultimately this ovarian artery anastomose with the uterine artery so uterine artery applying the uterus and the upper part this is this anastomose with the ovarian artery venous drainage drain into the internal iliac vein so just like uh, the uterine artery is coming from the internal iliac artery the vein will correspond with the same name artery now this is the vagina and in the vagina you can see that it's a fibromuscular tube 7 to 9 centimeter long it extends from cervix to vestibule vestibular part means the outer part it serves as a passive passageway for menstrual fluid so from the vagina uh, all the content of the uterus every month during menstruation cycle the endometrium the upper two layer of the endometrium the innermost layer of the uterus it shed off and passes out through the vagina it also uh, gave uh, when after pregnancy when the baby is delivering so this vagina canal become the birth canal baby is delivered from here because the baby is in the inside the uterus and what is the pathway to come out of the uterus the vagina so it comes out from the receptacle for intercourse yes for intercourse this is the site of the reception for the semen and other its external orifice is covered by a fold of mucous membrane called hilum now this opening is usually covered up is closed right and this covering membrane that closes this opening, uh, this membrane is called hilum. And sometimes this hilum has got small fenestrations because if you permanently close 100% this tube, so every month's menstrual cycle cannot occur here, right? So this membrane has got fenestrations, opening for the passage of the menstrual bleeding. Then we have got the vagina and the relationship of the vagina. Relationship means what are the structures anterior posterior to this one. So with the uterus, this is the vagina, and anterior to the vagina, we have got this is the fundus of the bladder, or you can say highest part of the bladder, posterior wall of the bladder, posterior surface of the bladder, and this is the trigon, and this is the neck of the bladder, and from there in the female, the urethra, four centimeter long, it is. So these two are the anterior relation with the vagina and posterior relation. This is structure. These are rectum, right? Anal canal. So these are on the posterior side. Laterally to the uh, a vagina, the structure is uh, the same what we have told. Anal canal, uh, levator and eye muscles, and the ureters. So ureter of the bladder is also on the lateral side. <coughs> Plus, laterally we have got the vagina, <coughs> anal canal, anal canal is there. Okay, <coughs> blood supply uh, to the vagina, sub, uh, superior part of the uterine and vaginal artery. And the venous drainage is through vaginal venous plexus drain into the internal area. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Thank you.